Are we in the dark days of West Virginia Mountaineer football? And what does Neil Brown's first four years in the Big 12 look like versus Dana Holgerson's first four years in the Big 12? That will tell us truly where we stand today. So pull up a chair, sit back, relax, and let's talk about it. What is up, college sports fans, fellow members of Mountaineer Nation? This is Coos, and welcome into another edition of Coos's Corner. Pull that chair up and let me serve you up this shot of top shelf college football content. On tap in this episode, comparing seasons. We're comparing Neil Brown's first four years at West Virginia in the Big 12 versus Dana Holgerson's first four years in the Big 12 as coach. And we're looking at the West Virginia football program as a whole. Now, the idea from this video came from none other than Boyce of Morgantown. He put out this tweet a couple days ago. It's on your screen right now. Talking about how we are in the dark days of West Virginia athletics in both football and basketball. I wanted to see what truly is the record of Neil Brown in the Big 12 versus Dana Holgerson's. Because I think that tells us a lot. Because you, when you're comparing eras and comparing dark, quote unquote, dark days, you've got to look at all the days, right? And when you look, if you go back to the late 1970s, 1976 through 1979, West Virginia had four straight losing seasons under Frank Signetti. To me, those were probably the dark, what I would consider the darkest days of West Virginia football so far. Don Neyland came on the, on the scene in 1980. The program turned around. He had very few losing seasons over his 20-year tenure at West Virginia. So I will take those last four years of the Signetti era as the darkest day so far. I will take Neil Brown's first four years as a close second to that. And, but there was actually a stretch during Dana Holgerson's tenure that did not really do that much better. And let's take a look at it. I put together a spreadsheet for you guys. I want to share it on the screen with you so that we can take a look at it together. But when you look at Neil Brown's first four years at West Virginia, obviously in the Big 12 Conference, he's compiled a record of 22 and 25. Now, on, on this chart, the 2020 and 2021 seasons are flip flop. That should be the opposite. It should be six and four in 2020 and six and seven in 2021. But the final result ends up being the same. He had a 20, he's, he has a 22 and 25 record overall, which is a 47% win percentage. And he's 14 and 21 in Big 12 play, which has been really the fan base's biggest gripe is he's not winning in conference, especially on the road. You look at his record in conference, he's three and six, four and five, four and four, three and six. So he's uh, no, no winning seasons in conference. The four and four year, which was actually 2020 is the best he's done. Keep in mind the Oklahoma game didn't happen that year because of COVID. They also didn't play Maryland, which would have impacted the out-of-conference record one way or the other. But nonetheless, he's not had a winning season in conference play. And only one winning season in out-of-conference play, in overall play, and that was a COVID year where two games got canceled. So, you know, depending on what the results of those games would have been, would have definitely skewed this one way or the other. Now, when you look at Dana's first four years in the Big 12, now I didn't count the 2011 season. That was the year Dana took over for Bill Stewart. The year they ended up playing in the Orange Bowl and winning the Orange Bowl. They were playing in the Big East that year. So I don't think comparing that year to Neil Brown's era is fair because they were playing a totally different schedule. And let's face it, it was an easier schedule playing UConn, the Cincinnati of those days, Rutgers, those teams, versus playing Oklahoma State, Oklahoma, Texas, TCU, Baylor, you know, those teams. So – I took the first four years of the Dana Holgerson era in the Big 12. Let's look at his record. 26 and 25 overall, a 51% winning percentage. So, yes, he was better than Neil Brown in that regard. When you look at his conference record, not really that much better. Yes, better by a small margin, but not that much. His conference records were four and five, two and seven, five and four, four and five. For an overall conference record of 15 and 21, which is 42% win percentage. Only 2% better than what Neil Brown has seen so far in four years. Now, like I said, that doesn't include Neil Brown's game against Oklahoma in 2020, and the out-of-conference schedule doesn't include Maryland in 2020. Now, let's look at the out-of-conference schedule. You see that Dana does have a 51% win percentage out-of-conference, or overall, rather, including out-of-conference. But when you look at the opponents, Dana has played one less game against Power 5 teams out-of-conference. He has played James Madison, Marshall, Maryland four times. He played Maryland four times during this four-year period. Because they were during that time frame, they were playing each other every year. He played William and Mary, Georgia State. He did have a game against Alabama in there in 2014. He played Towson, Georgia Southern, and Liberty. So only two Power Five opponents, five games overall against Power Five teams out of conference. So that can that can impact your overall record. Now let's take a look at Neil Brown's record against or games against non-conference competition. He has played James Madison, 
Missouri, NC State, Eastern Kentucky, Maryland only one time because the 2020 game was canceled, LIU, he played Virginia Tech twice, and Pitt, and then Towson. So you look at the number of Power 5 teams he's played out of conference, you've got six. Would have been seven had he played Maryland in 2020, but he's played six. One SEC team, a, a Big Ten team, and three ACC teams, and, of course, played one of those two times at Virginia Tech now. So when you compare this, it looks on the surface like, okay, Maryland's teams weren't very good back when Dana was playing them. They, they were worse than West Virginia during that era, or at least not any better. So West Virginia should have a good non-conference record, right, considering that Alabama was really the only, really, only good non-conference Power 5 team they played. But when you dig in and look at the records that Missouri, NC State, Maryland, Virginia Tech, and Pitt had when Neil Brown played them, the era in which or the years in which he played them, they weren't all that great either. 2019, when West Virginia played Missouri, Missouri ended up finishing the season six and six, 500 record. And Missouri pounded West Virginia that year. I mean, it wasn't even close. Now, we gave Neil Brown a pass on that one because it was his first year in the program and he was trying to change the culture and all that. We all, anytime a coach is in his first year, you normally give him a pass, right? Especially at a, at a program like West Virginia, where we know it's going to take a year or two. They beat NC State in 2019, but NC State had a losing record that year. So they weren't very good. Maryland. Played Maryland in 2021. We lost to Maryland in 2021. Maryland was an okay team. I think they made a bowl game. But weren't they, they didn't set the world on fire. They weren't great. But Maryland beat West Virginia. We've beaten Virginia Tech twice, which is great. We've got the Black Diamond Trophy in Morgantown. It's a big win. It's a rivalry game. However, both Virginia Tech teams that Neil Brown beat had losing records that year. so. Did not really beat good Virginia Tech teams. And then the Pitt game, that is one game Neil Brown has lost to a good team. Pitt did not end up being as good as people thought they were going to be this past 2022 season, but they were a good team nonetheless. I think they won eight or nine games, made it to a bowl game, had a good year. So we'll give it, you know, we'll give you that one. And really, West Virginia should have won that game. Uh, but when you look at this comparisons, yes, even though Dana played only Maryland and Alabama. The Power 5 teams Neil Brown have played has not been juggernauts, folks. So I, we cannot give him a pass on that. At first glance, when I looked at this, I thought, wait a minute now. Neil gets a pass because he's played a tougher non-conference schedule. Not really. Not really. Uh, yes, he's played one more Power 5 team or one more game against Power 5 opponents, I should say. But the quality of those Power 5 opponents has not really been that much of a gap. But, but, but when you look at the conference play, that's really where there's not big a big difference here. You've got Dana Hogerson at 15 and 21. You've got Neil Brown at 14 and 21 because he's played one less game. Now, had we turned around and beaten Oklahoma that year, he'd have the same record as Dana Hogerson. Of course, if we'd have lost, he'd be one game behind. But, hey, it's Oklahoma, right? So, not a big difference when you look at the Big 12 conference results. So, therefore – I don't think are quite as I don't think things are quite as bad when you look at it overall. Yes, Neil Brown has a losing record. Yes, he has a losing record in conference, but so did Dana Holgerson in his first four years in the program. But guess what Dana Holgerson did in year five of his tenure in the Big 12 at West Virginia? They won 10 games. They went 10 and 3 in 2016. Ended up finishing third place in the Big 12. Could have very easily finished second place. Lost a couple games I felt they could have won. But they had a good year. 10 and 3 finish. They did end up getting beaten handily in their bowl game, but we all know Dan Ogre's teams typically didn't play well in bowl games. But they did win 10 games that year. So can Neil Brown repeat that in 2023? If Neil Brown can do in his fifth year what Dana Holgerson did in his, I think Mountaineer Nation will finally change their opinions on Neil Brown. Will finally look at the program and think, okay, maybe we are headed in the right direction. Now he would have to sustain that success. But I think he can do it. Now, if he can, then we can say, okay, he's the guy for the job. Now, if he doesn't, I will be right there with you saying, hey, we need to move a different direction. Matter of fact, I have already been on that bandwagon. But when they decided to keep Neil Brown, I made the decision, okay, I'm going to stop saying he needs fired. I'm going to support him. I'm going to support the program. I'm going to back their decision because that's what's best for the program. So I want to just dig into the numbers here, you guys. Uh, is this the dark days of West Virginia football? I don't think so. If we have another losing season or even another 500 season, then I could say you can make that argument. But as of right now, I think the late 70s would really be 
considered the dark days. It's we might be in the darkest period in the last, oh, I don't know, forty years, but it's not the darkest of all time. So the sky's not falling. Let's see what Neil Brown can do in year five, because that's how long it took Dana. We all know Dana had the ten and three season in twenty sixteen. He won seven games in twenty seventeen, and then turned around and won eight games in twenty eighteen, which actually was probably an underachieving season because. They should have been playing for a Big 12 title. But nonetheless, that he did turn things around in year five. Let's see if Neil Brown can do the same. With that being said, I want to hear your thoughts in the comment section. Do you agree with me that this is not the dark days of West Virginia football, but we are on the verge of being there? I want to hear your thoughts. I'm not saying things are sunshine and rainbows because they're not. But I don't want to go as far as to say it's the dark days of West Virginia football. Not just yet. I think we need to give it one more year before we make that claim then maybe we can say, yes, it's the dark days of West Virginia football because it would be five straight years of mediocrity for the first time since 1980. Let me know in the comments. Folks, If right now is the time. If you want to buy something from the Coosa Corner merch store, Monday, January 16th through Wednesday, January, January 18th, you get free shipping in my merch store. Any item in my merch store, you get shipped for absolutely free. Click the link at the top of the description box to take advantage of that offer. You can also join Kuz's Corner, take advantage of some of the perks I have to offer there. You get early access to some videos. You get some access to uh, members-only content. You're able to get into contests and things like that that only channel members have access to. If you want to support me absolutely free, there's four ways you can do it. You can like this video by hitting the thumbs up button. You can share this out with your college football-loving friends, especially if they're a West Virginia fan. You can drop that comment below like I mentioned earlier. And last but not least, please subscribe to the channel. I'm trying to hit 5,000 subscribers by the end of March. Please help me get to that goal. I need your help. So like, share, comment, subscribe. All that helps the YouTube algorithm. All of it helps get my video promoted to more people. Help Cousins Corner brand grow. We'll help grow the channel here at Cousins Corner and get more Mountain Air football content and Big 12 football content because I don't cover just West Virginia. Get more Big 12 and West Virginia content out to the fans out there. So that being said, I really appreciate you tuning into this video. Until the next one, Q Country Roads. Oh,